Hey guys, Ken Marks, Goosehead Insurance. Hope everybody's well and managing the COVID. It's starting to get a little old now, six months in. I'm sure you're tired of it like everybody else, including myself, but it is what it is. So um, as a result, no one's been able to visit, see anybody. And uh, you know, it makes it hard for guys like me to drop in and say hi and let you know how much I appreciate your business and uh, see if I can help you with anything. So I thought I'd make a short video and just check in with everybody. Say, first off, thank you very much for your business. I do appreciate it. You guys have been doing a great job keeping me busy. And uh, fortunately, rates are low and that's uh, helping you guys out along with all the people that are trying to get out of the Bay Area, I guess, these days and just come to the realization they don't need to be tied to... Uh, their, their job down there, they can work from anywhere, which is, um, you know, also made a change for most of us as well, since all of us are working from home these days, or at least a lot of us are. At any rate, thank you very much. And uh, if you do have any deals that uh, you need help on or guidance, please uh, give me a call or shoot me an email and we will do our best to make sure we get the policy issued and bound for you. Um, with that being said, I just wanted to hit a couple of highlights and uh, kind of refresh everybody as to the fair plan, how it works, and a couple of things that might help you guys um, on the next deal you write. So I'm going to turn this to my board and just take a quick look. First off, um, because of the epidemic, there's still not a lot of options up in the hills. So we're writing a ton of fair plan business still. And um, as a reminder, when um, you get the fair plan quote from me, everybody want, every once in a while, I get a call or email from somebody saying, hey, Ken, I noticed that the fire option, which I've highlighted here, is um, blacked out and that uh, there's no coverage for fire. When in fact, uh, because of the way the fair plan works, it provides fire only. So we don't have the option of checking or not checking that box. It is a default coverage for every single fair plan policy. So don't worry if you see that and um, you think, uh oh, I just got a quote and there's no fire. It's fire. It's always fire. The other two that you see below that ECE, which stands for Extended Coverage Endorsement, and then VMM, which is Vandalism and Malicious Mischief, those two are options, and we always check them anyway, just because every homeowner should have that kind of coverage. And so we always make it a habit of making sure that your clients and our clients are covered. Okay, second thing to note, um, in June, the Fair Plan raised their coverage limits from 1.5 million to 3 million. So that's nice. It gives us an opportunity to help out some of your clients that are buying those larger homes in the hills that uh, are you know upwards of five to 6,000 square feet with a pool and marble and granite and hardwood throughout and all those sorts of things that drive up the cost of rebuilding a house. Second, we need 40% down from your client. We cannot run that through the escrow account. So just, uh, we always try to remind your clients, but when you talk to them after you present the client, it's always a good thing if you can prepare them so that they don't get caught off guard. And then the last thing is, it takes about 24 hours, sometimes less, but about 24 hours is the typical turnaround from the fair plan when we submit the 40% and then they release the quote and issue the policy so that we can turn around and send you the evidence of coverage, which is what you guys need. Okay, over here on this side is just a couple things about wrap. Um, as you know, we need the wrap to go with the fair plan so that way we have full coverage. And the wrap really just provides contents and liability. Contents meaning, you know, if someone comes home and finds their house burglarized, liability if they're sued for something they did or didn't do either because someone got hurt or somebody said something and then the normal things like broken pipes and um, you know uh, any any typical homeowner claim that could happen okay couple things to note about what drives the fair plan premium there's three primary things that the carriers look at and that is fire hydrant location fire department and dual access. So with regards to the fire hydrant, there needs to be a fire hydrant within at least a thousand feet of the house. If there's not, that drives the price up. Second, there needs to be a fire department that is manned, no volunteer, but needs to be manned within five miles of the house. And then third, the fire department needs to have dual access, meaning if you have a house that's at the end of a dead end street, which I'm sure is preferable because it's quiet, and private, 
it's it that is not going to be a house that the fire department is going to save in a wildfire they need to have two ways in and two ways out because as you know fires can change direction in a heartbeat and the fire department will not put themselves in a position where they can't get out so those three things really drive the uh, the price of the house or i should say the policy in addition to the coverage limits of course but those are the three primary things that the carriers look for um, to determine what the premium is going to be based upon the risk okay all right and then the last thing just a couple quick reminders this is my checklist uh, most of you guys are pretty good at helping me out with this but again i just try to remind everybody these are the types of things that can kill your deal on the last minute and so the more information you provide me the better job i can do for you of course having a name on the quote always makes it personable to your client so please send me their name so we can add that to the quote second uh, if it's a primary or a second home those are two different types of policies and we insure them differently so if it's a primary residence that's good to know but if it's a second home whether it be an investment property or maybe a second home in tahoe and then the third thing is are they going to rent that second home so typically you'll have people that buy homes in tahoe and they rent them a couple times a year or maybe they rent them all the time and they go up there when they're not rented point is it's good information for us to know so that we can quote it properly and avoid having to come back to you or your client and say, hey, we need to redo this. And now all of a sudden we've got a premium that goes up and a DTI problem. Uh, third, is there a business that's gonna be run from the home? And I don't mean, are they working from home because that's about everybody these days, but do they have a business where their employees and or customers show up to their home and conduct business? Fourth, dogs. Dogs can be a big problem, especially if it's a dog that is on the do not insure list. Typically it's pit bulls, Rottweilers, German Shepherds, Akitas, dogs of that nature. The small dogs that sit in your lap, we don't care about those, they're great, we like those. But um, you know, you don't always know these types of uh, questions or answers, I should say, but in the course of a conversation, clients say things, so just, jot them down. If somebody says, oh yeah, we've got a couple of German Shepherds or we have a pit bull, I'm sure they're friendly like everybody's are, but the point is it creates a problem for us when we get to the quoting portion of uh, the risk. Fifth, is there a pool? And if there's a pool, does it have a slide and or a diving board? Uh, doesn't mean we can't insure it, it just means that we need to notate it and in some cases the carriers might put a surcharge on there for that additional risk. The last thing is prior claims. Typically, you guys wouldn't find out about that, but it does come up and I just mention it because um, when we run the quote through the final binding process, if we find a claim that we weren't aware of, that can actually drive the premium up or in fact um, disqualify the, the client and then we have to find a new carrier, all right? Okay, that's it. I appreciate your time. I hope everybody's doing well. And uh, again, thank you for your business and stay safe. And uh, I am more than willing to meet and greet and say hi. So if anybody is working from their office or would like to grab a cocktail or lunch, please hit me up. Um, I'd love to see you and check in and just see how you're doing and um, shake your hand and say hi. Bye.